hello and welcome to Take Other Toddler. A bit of a different one today, so we're, uh, we're uh, going, uh, it's actually a very important birthday for me this time. It's the old uh, Hawaii 5 -0. So it's the old, uh, yeah, so we're on the, the big 5 -0, so we decided to come around Manchester on a bit of a pub crawl. So we thought we'd start here, of all places, the Salford Lads Club. And I don't know whether you can pick this up, it's a bit windy or what have you, and I'm on my microphone, so I don't think you can pick this up, but uh, you'll either be able to hear me or you won't, one or two. So yes, yeah, Salford Lads Club's famous for a number of reasons. First of all, it was opened in 1904 by none other than Baden Powell, or Lord Baden Powell. And that was three or four years before it started scout movement. So, uh, so yeah, and over the years, it's had quite a number of uh, famous uh, members. There's been a few footballers. There were a guy called Albert McPherson, a little guy called Steve Fleet, and most importantly, from a footballing point of view, was none other than Eddie Wiggle Your Hips Coleman, uh, one of the Busby babes who unfortunately perished at Munich. It's reputed that Eddie could shake, uh, snake his hips and send the grandstand the wrong way. That's how, how good Eddie was. So yeah, uh, famous, uh, there's a couple of other famous people. Is, uh, there's a couple of the, the Hollies band that were members of the uh, Salford Lads Club. And obviously it was uh, brought in at the time of uh, when there won't have been that much going on around here for, for kids to do. So obviously Salford Lads Club at that time at the turn of the century uh, will have been a big thing to sort of get kids uh, uh, you know, having stuff for them to do. So they'll have been doing stuff like uh, get them a gymnasium and uh, uh, other sort of uh, uh, stuff in this, it might have been a billiard room, so there were stuff for them to do when I was kids. But uh, yeah, so we're going to have a quick look around here and then we're going to start on the old uh, pub crawl. But hopefully, you'll enjoy this video, something uh, a little bit different. Right, hello, and welcome to Take Other Toddler. A bit of a different one today, so we're, uh, we're uh, going, uh, it's actually a very important birthday for me this time. It's the old uh, Hawaii 5 0. So it's the old, uh, yeah, so we're on the, the big 5 0, so we decided to come and uh, around Manchester on a bit of a pub crawl, so we thought we'd start here, of all places, the Salford Lads Club. And I don't know whether you can pick this up, it's a bit windy or what have you, and I'm on my microphone, so I don't think you can pick this up, but uh, you'll either be able to hear me or you won't, one or two. So yes, yeah, Salford Lads Club's famous for a number of reasons. First of all, it was opened in 1904 by none other than Baden Powell, or Lord Baden Powell. And that was three or four years before it started scout movement. So, uh, so yeah, and over the years, it's had quite a number of uh, famous uh, members. There's been a few footballers. There were a guy called Albert McPherson, a little guy called Steve Fleet, and most importantly, from a footballing point of view, was none other than Eddie Wiggle Your Hips Coleman, uh, one of the Busby babes who unfortunately perished at Munich. It's reputed that Eddie could shake, uh, snake his hips and send the grandstand the wrong way. That's how, how good Eddie was. So yeah, uh, famous. Uh, there's a couple of other famous people. Is, uh, there's a couple of the, the Hollies band that were members of the uh, Salford Lads Club. And obviously it was uh, brought in at the time of uh, when there won't have been that much going on around here for, for kids to do. So obviously it's all Lads Club at that time at the turn of the century. Uh, will have been a big thing to sort of get kids, uh, uh, you know, having stuff for them to do. So they'll have been doing stuff like uh, get them a gymnasium and uh, uh, other sort of uh, uh, stuff in this. It might have been a billiard room. So there were stuff for them to do when I was kids. But uh, yeah, so we're going to have a quick look around here and then we're going to start on the old uh, pub crawl. But hopefully you'll enjoy this video. Something uh, a little bit different. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, by the way, also famous for none other than uh, featured on the album The Smiths, The Queen Is Dead, and also featured in the uh, video for Stop Me. So have you ever seen it? So have you ever seen Morrissey riding around here on his bikes, but with his spectacles on, this is where he came. And, and also, not the Coronation Street, but a Coronation Street, because it's actually on the corner of Coronation Street in St. Ignis Way. So there we go, so we've come to have a look around inside, hopefully they'll let us in very soon.
Uh, We've been shown around the uh, Smithson. I think did this used to be gymnasium then, I guess, is it? Or uh, did this used to be gymnasium with weights in here? Or? Yeah. Fantastic. This is what I did when I came. All the stuff in the pictures were still in here. Right, so we've just been having a look around. It's absolutely fabulous in there. I highly recommend you come and have a look at this. Uh, it's just like stepping back in time. It's just wonderful what, uh, what they actually uh, do there and all it's fantastic. It's still a, you know, a proper club where kids are getting, you know, they're still running trips all over and one thing or another and they've got the boxing and the, the hall upstairs and uh, uh, Leslie and I think it was Dave that's shown us around. Just absolutely fabulous. So yeah, if you ever come to Manchester, come and have a look at our uh, Salford Lads Club. It's absolutely fantastic. Right, we're still in Salford, we're now at the, uh, if you can see it, try to get a sign in there, King's Arms. So we're at the King's Arms and uh, the King's Arms is just opposite the, oh, car coming. So just opposite the gas offices, which is quite a remarkable building across the road. I'll just try and spin it down and show you. So yeah, they're uh, gas building. So I think I think the actual uh, pub used to be across the road at, at one point. But uh, yeah, um, uh, so the King's Arms, what can we tell you about the King's Arms? Well. Let's spin it around so we can show you it building a bit more. So the King's Arms was uh, first licensed in 1807. And uh, it's been used by various clubs over over years for all sorts of things. So there's been a fishing club, there's been a knitting club, and there's even been a terrier club. Uh, but um, uh, it was actually bought in 2011 by uh, Paul Heaton of uh, uh, the House Martins and uh, uh, Beautiful South fame. And he had it for about five years. And now it's uh, run by, or it was run, as far as I know, by a lady called Lisa o Lisa Connor, um, and uh, uh, I think it was listed in um, it was listed in uh, 1987. So it was quite a beautiful building. But we're all just uh, sat outside now, waiting for it to open. It sounds a bit desperate, doesn't it? But, uh, but yeah, quite. So that's the first uh, first one of the pubs. It's uh, the King's Arms. If there's anything inside worth uh, noting, we'll take a picture of it for you there as well.
Right, so we've just been at Hawks Mall Steakhouse, had a fantastic meal, and uh, we're out on the first pub of the pubs that we're going to visit today, or the second pub after the uh, King's Arms. And this one is uh, Pedro of the Peak, which is on Great Bridgewater Street, and it dates back to the 1830s, and it's allegedly named after a stagecoach that ran between Manchester and London, and it got Grade 2 listed status in 1988. It is also famous for the landlady who is called Nancy Swanick, or at least she was, I don't know if she still is, but she's been here over 50 years and is allegedly 92 years of age, so we're going to go inside and see if we can find Nancy, I hope we can. Uh, but um, this thing's just really, really beautiful, it's got all these bottle green tiles and as you can see, it's got a load of new buildings surrounding it, but this thing's uh, really, really beautiful, so yeah, that's the pedal of the peak, I'll take some pictures inside. Right, so we're in the pebble in the peak now inside. So the pint of gear, so this is beautiful. It's got a lot of stained glass window and a bar. And its layout's quite common. It's got a public bar. And then it's got like a, uh, I don't know what you call it, like a bit of a snug or something at the front of the room, room at the back. With a corridor running in between. And uh, the next pub we go to is quite similar as well. But they, this is properly beautiful. I love this place. Really, really good. What do you think? What do you think? It's all right. Yeah. It's all right. Pieces, it's all right. But it's got to be all right, hasn't it? <laughs> right, we're still on Great Bridge Street, and as you can see up here, we're at the uh, the Britain's Protection, and uh, we've been here before. It was established in 1811, and uh, uh, Pubby was used to uh, get to men to sign up for the Napoleonic Wars, and um, it got Grade Two listed status in 1990, and the interiors. Beautiful, it's got a lot of light red tiles and it's also got some murals from the, the Peterloo Massacre, uh, which uh, I'll talk about a little bit more, the, the Peterloo Massacre, which happened in 1819. Uh, but uh, yeah, the pub's really, really, really wonderful. It was allegedly where they brought uh, the wounded back from the Peterloo Massacre uh, back to, so that's why it's been protected. And the great thing is, if you look at it from a distance, there's all these high rise buildings behind it, but yet the uh, Britain protection still stands here. They keep trying to get rid of it. But uh, now it's got listed protection, hopefully we won't be able to do anything with it. Also, it, similar to what I said before, it's got a room at the a public bar, then it's got a sort of snug, and then it's got a, a rear room. And it also has, allegedly, 360 whiskies to choose from. So if you can't find a whiskey in here, you've got a problem. But I'll take some pictures when I get inside. Right, you might not get any of this because we're outside Alpha Abercrombie, but there's a, sounds like there's a disco going on next door. So the Alpha Abercrombie is actually on Bootle Street between Jackson Road and Great Bridgewater Street. And it's named after uh, Lieutenant General Sir Alpha Abercrombie, who was a soldier at the end of the 18th century and also a politician. It was built in the 19th century and boasts quite a few different things, um, including obviously, as it says on this sign here, the Peterloo Massacre. So, uh, uh, quite an interesting pub, it's really nice inside, it's got a few interesting features which I'll show you in a little bit. Uh, it's very much a Manchester United pub, uh, there's a mural of the, the stone roses inside which I'll show you in a bit. And surprisingly another one of his sir, uh, Sir Gary Neville, uh, tried to get rid of the pub in uh, 2017 because they were to build some more high drive tower blocks or exclusive apartments, so thank you Gary. With friends like that who needs enemies, but uh, Gary failed and the Reds go matching on and on, so that's the Albert Ralph of a crumb
Right, we've got to Old Nags Head now on uh, Jackson's Row, and this is a massive Manchester United pub, is this? Uh, also dates back to 19th century, and it has a mural and all sorts of stuff uh, uh, in Rio Gala. There's lots and lots of tilts to uh, George Best in here, and I've got to say, uh, one of my biggest regrets in life is uh, I would do it meet George Best and uh, Dennis Law, you're going to have to do a sort of uh, uh, a talk at the a pub called. Um, the Cock of the North in Gorton, and uh, uh, anyway, it was the week that uh, Matt Busby died, so the council and we ended up going to see Tommy Dockett instead. But uh, yeah, my biggest regret is that I didn't get to meet George Best. But yeah, this is uh, the old Nag Z, and I think there's quite a lot of history about Manchester in here. So uh, when I get inside, I'll show you what it is. All right. Right, we're outside the uh, City Arms because that's the one that we're going to the Vine actually next door. It looks quite nice as a facade, but inside it's quite modern, so we're going to give that a dodge. Well, probably it's haunted or something, but I mean, what pub isn't haunted? I've seen a few ghosts in lots of pubs. So, anyhow, yeah, this pub, uh, the City Arms, uh, dates back to the late 18th century, but the interior today was refurbished about 1900, and the pub was listed in 1974. And it has some lovely wood seat and panel, a bit like House of Commons, and it's obviously got the leaded windows at the front. And it's also got an Art Deco fireplace. So yeah, it's quite a, quite an interesting pub, but I think it's, uh, even though it's been a refurb inside, it's uh, still quite, you know, quite quite tasteful and quite, uh, quite uh, well, at least 100 years old. So let's give City Arms a go. Right, uh, we're, here, we're here now, we're uh, outside the Shakespeare of all places, right? So this is a Shakespeare pub, right? And uh, I've got to tell you now, this, this place has got a really, really fascinating history. Because although it stood in this location since uh, 1928, and the plaque outside says it has stood, there's been a, a, a drinking establishment on this site since 1771, the existing structure that is here now, actually it dates back to 1656. 
but originally it was in Chester, it was in the Shambles, it was called, well it was actually known as the Shambles of Public House, and hence the mock Tudor appearance. So in 1928 what they basically did is they dismantled it and brought it here, and uh, uh, it has a number of the original features still inside of it, I think they've done a quite a tasteful job on it, but uh, yeah quite interesting really that you know obviously it looks like it's been here forever but it feels more in, in line with Chester than it certainly does with Manchester but uh, but yeah really interesting the Shakespeare pub so that's why it looks like it does. Right, we're up at uh, the Hare and Hounds at Should Hill, I think it's pronounced, and uh, yeah, quite a lovely facade to the pub. Spin it round. So yeah, it looks very, very nice. And uh, what can I say about this place? Well, it follows the tradition of the ones that we've just been in, that you know, front room, back room, corridor down the side, and all the rest of it. And um, yeah, I mean, it, uh, it's amazing that obviously it dates back to uh, uh, it's sort of blending into the, the urban features, but ultimately. It had a complete refurb in 1925, and uh, you know a lot of uh, things, uh, a lot of features in, since the 1925 refurb are still there. So it's uh, quite pretty, and uh, quite common to the uh, quite a lot of what we're seeing, a bit like the Britain's protection. So yeah, we'll see what it's got to offer inside. But yeah, this is uh, Aaron House on Shud Hill. Right, we're getting to end now, so we're uh, at the Smithfield Market Tavern, and um, here we go, it's a bit of a side there, so it's part of the Smithfield Market, but like, uh, in 1929, the Smithfield Market Tavern was actually a grocery shop, and then the licensee, Isaac Middleton, converted it into a shop with a vault, and installed an eight-yard bar counter, so quite a thing really, but... Um, yeah, I mean, obviously this part was part of market, so I think it actually backs on to market, but uh, quite a lot of things, I think quite a lot of original features have been taken out of this uh, uh, building now, but yeah, still a, a lovely place, but we're, we're getting towards end now, we're getting towards end of Ale Train, I think we've got uh, either one or two left after this, so, but we're living the dream, it's just been absolutely fantastic, I'd recommend anybody come to Manchester and do this, so, uh, I hope you enjoyed it so far, we've certainly enjoyed it, so, well, yeah, get you sent to Manchester. We're right, we're off at Smithfield Town to have a slurp. Speak to you in a bit. Right, here we are at the uh, old uh, Castle Hotel and uh, this has got quite a bit of an interesting bit of history of the Castle Hotel. So the Castle Hotel um, dates back to 1776 and it's in the northern quarter of Manchester. And over the years the pub has changed its name a few times so it was originally, it was from a few times it's been called the Cowan Sceptre, it's been called the Cowan Anchor and the Clock Face and in the 19th century it was taken over by Kay's Brewery and it started a new chapter as a castle hotel. It's also been a music hall and uh, it's got a venue at the back, I think it's got holds about 80 people. It's quite an important uh, venue for uh, music in Manchester. So uh, a lot of people, the music's in Manchester really, really uh, like it. And um, it was registered, it was a great to listen in 1988. So it uh, sounds like it could be quite interesting. Quite similar to probably quite a number of pubs we've been into so far. We'll see what it's got to offer inside, but yeah, this is the Castle Hotel, so it should be quite interesting inside.
Right, here we go, folks. This is it. So we, behind me is the old Wellington, and we are a shadow of a doubt. This is the oldest pub in Manchester. Look at it, right? And right, this thing, right, dates back to, it was built in 1552. So there's no mock Tudor here, there's no mock about it. This is a real thing, right? And uh, it was actually moved about 100 metres up the road because of the redevelopment. And if you see next door, there's Sinclair Oyster, oyster Bar. I don't know if they sell oysters, but they do, I might go have an oyster, right? But, but uh, that's a uh, thing, but I think they've refurbed this when they moved it up the road, they refurbed it all, and it's absolutely, absolutely classic. So we're going to look and see how authentically they've uh, refurbed it. But um, it looks wonderful. But that brings to the end, the end of uh, Teeth of the Toddlers. 50th birthday hotel. Can I just say, right, not just from my point of view, but from my family's point of view, they've really, really looked after me, my wife, my kids. I'm a very, very lucky man. I'm a little bit drunk, but not stupidly drunk, which has been tactically done very well. So I'm really, really pleased with what, what the outcome is so far. We're gonna go and have a little pint in here, and then we basically, if we've got the pictures, I'll show you it with you. I'll put a little video together, and then we'll try and find somewhere to watch a bit of uh, uh, boxing or whatever, but can I just say, thank you for taking the trolley. I hope you've enjoyed watching it. I would strongly recommend you come to Manchester and try this pub trail or something similar because it's absolutely fabulous. There's so many wonderful old pubs around Manchester, it's just a joy. So, until uh, until another time, thank you so much for watching Tito the Trodler. I look forward to seeing you soon. All the best. <laughs>